thank you and uh, thank you for the invitation and thank you particularly for um, inviting me to the dinner last night. There's nothing I enjoy more than wearing a silly hat to add to my credibility. I have actually packed it in my bag and it will look less like a um, sombrero, more like a tortilla by the time I get, get it home. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to talk about is just a little bit about um, apples and pears and how they might fit into a healthy diet. Some of the evidence uh, around apples and pears, uh, I, I must say it was a really interesting journey for me to learn a lot more and going into a deep dive in terms of some of the nutritional benefits um, and, and really just to explore some of the opportunities um, for um, potential innovation um, in the industry. Now, you may or may not be aware of the fact that there are general dietary recommendations. These are government recommendations based on healthy eating uh, and uh, that, uh, in fact, there are a range of foods that we need to be eating every day. Um, and most of the foods that we eat need to come out of that bigger circle. And you can see fruit is, is one of those. Um, and our biggest challenge is the fact that we overconsume junk food. 20 percent um, uh, or less uh, needs to uh, be coming from junk food. But in reality, for adults and children, it's more like 30 to 40 per cent. Um, and if we look specifically at that part of the sector that talks about fruit, two fruit serves a day is what we should be eating. That's as, as a minimum, uh, and that's for um, pretty much um, every man, woman and child. Um, the degree to which we achieve those recommendations is, is variable. Uh, and whilst on average we probably almost get there, there's a significant proportion of the population that don't really eat um, the required um, number of fruit serves per day. How can we actually assess our diet in a way that we can really evaluate whether, in fact, we're eating adequately? And I thought I'd just do a quick little plug for a, um, a, a, a development that we have at the CSIRO, which is called the CSIRO Healthy Diet Score. Uh, and it's basically a simple questionnaire. It's online uh, and um, basically it will take you 15 to 20 minutes to go through it. Um, and depending on your score, it will give you feedback on whether or not you're having the right quantities of fruit, vegetable, dairy products, grains, etc. cetera. Um, so if you're interested in seeing how you measure up, I'd recommend that you go to um, CSIRO Diet Score, just do a Google on it. Um, but I do think it's really important and you'll see um, some useful feedback and also you'll get some feedback back on whether or not you are um, uh, doing well in relation to your gender, your age group, your state uh, as well. So um, sorry for that diversion, but I guess the point of today's discussion really is to talk about the nutritional composition of apples and pears and some of the potential benefits. Um, and this is some data that's available. It's very generic data, comes from the USDA. There's a little bit of Australian data as well. Um, but really, I think um, apples and pears are relatively unspectacular when it comes to vitamins and minerals um, by and large um, but there are a whole lot of other things I think that are really far more exciting. So you can see here that you know apples are quite low in kilojoules um, they are reasonably high in dietary fibre and pears too compared to uh, other fruits um, they are also very low in glycemic index and I think for those people with type 2 diabetes or anyone wanting to keep their blood sugar level and appetite under control, that's a really important attribute. Um, vitamin C, mm, you know, four, yes, uh, it's about 10% of the recommended dietary intake, but really citrus fruits really blitz apples and pears in that category. Um, so what is interesting is, uh, apart from the dietary fibre, is in relation to pears, they, are, uh, they contain sorbitol. Sorbitol is a mild laxative agent, and um, that is a unique attribute of pears relative to other fruits. Um, and that's something that's been exploited in some products already in the marketplace, a product called Nulax. I don't know whether you've heard of it. You may have seen it in, in a pharmacy, but you can see there's a pear in there and there are a few other fruits as well. And uh, part of the reason that pears are there is because of that that mild laxative effect. Now, we don't know what the variability of sorbitol is in different pear species, but I think that there's some interesting potential there to explore um, both for um, products that might be targeted at uh, gut health um, and laxation potential for um, adults and children. So looking at really processing opportunities and how you might maximise some of those components. Well, I thought that was really quite interesting. 
Now, the Apple report, we did the review in 2009, um, which um, provided a lot, of, a lot of scientific background and then a more consumer-friendly version, which is the Apple report that is already online. You can Google it. Uh, and there was some media activity associated with that report. And these are some of the, um, I love the press, they come up with interesting ways of, of talking about things. And Apple a day gets the boffin tick, uh, tick of science and Apple's on the A-list. It was interesting. Um, so I think it was a great opportunity to think about Apple apples in a, as not just a fruit, but what else is in an apple, what it can do, and give people to, uh, to an opportunity and a reason to look at an apple in a different way other than just a fruit. And I think at the moment that's what we're doing for pears. The evidence is far less than um, the evidence for apples. Nevertheless, um, there are some intriguing little um, snippets that I'll talk about today. Uh, from that Apple report, some of the highlights were the role of apples in managing type 2 diabetes. You don't need to read all of the details here, but in essence, um, uh, there are associations between apple consumers and type 2 diabetes. Those people that eat more apples tend to have less diabetes. Is that because something about the apple or because people that eat apples generally have better diets? Most likely. Um, but it may also be that apples are low in glycemic index and eating apples may assist in weight management, which can help prevent diabetes as well. Um, uh, apples contain not just vitamins and minerals, of which, as I said, a little bit unspectacular, um, but they do contain a range of other components called polyphenols, particularly in the skin, um, and in proportions equivalent to it, eating an apple a day can and has been shown um, to alleviate some symptoms of respiratory allergies and um, nasal discharge and sneezing. And there are links between apple consumption uh, and asthma. So there are some interesting components in apples that have some reasonably interesting evidence that goes beyond just associations or just what happens in a test tube. So, you know, I do think that there are some particular components in certain kinds of apples that may actually... Um, have some benefit there. Um, now, when we're talking about apples, there's a whole lot of apples uh, components. There's apple skin, there's the juice. Not everything is necessarily going to contribute to those benefits, but basically what this particular study shows that if you look at whole apples, you look at uh, apple pomace, uh, cloudy apple juice and clear apple juice, um, they have very different effects on cholesterol lowering. Um, and so the cholesterol lowering comes from both the pectin in the apple uh, as well as the polyphenols that are on the apple skin. Um, and as soon as you take out all of those components and just have the juice, you really obliterate uh, any impact on, on cholesterol lowering. And there's some re reasonably good evidence around um, the cholesterol lowering uh, attributes of apples. And in particular, uh, a study that I think, and I'm, you know, because I'm involved in running human clinical trials in Adelaide and you know, we, bleed and, uh, we feed and bleed people, uh, we like to know what happens to people when they eat particular foods, human clinical trials are really the most robust way of really understanding what the health attributes of, of foods uh, might be and therefore what you might be able to say um, uh, um, uh, about um, the relationship between a food consumption and health. So this study basically um, looked at the... Um, polyphenols in apples, it ground them down, had them uh, into um, capsules uh, and uh, what they were able to show is that LDL cholesterol, LDL for lethal, the nasty cholesterol, um, it, it lo was lowered by about 8%. Actually that's, that's pretty good, that's really similar to what some of the cholesterol lowering margarines do uh, and they were able to do that just using the, the capsules alone. So there's lots of opportunity I think in terms of looking at the waste uh, from apple products and, and what their uh, potential might might be in terms of both uh, nutraceuticals as well as um, value-added products as well. Um, and uh, this is really another uh, study to show that, look, it's not just apples. Apples and pears come from the same um, POM um, um, areas uh, and, and background. And so um, basically both apple and pear peels um, have been shown to lower cholesterol levels. Apples have been shown in humans, but um, this particular study showed that both apple and pear peel does influence cholesterol levels, at least in, uh, in, a, in a rat study. 
Um, there are also some other interesting aspects of um, uh, the peel, and that is the anti-inflammatory effects um, due to procyanogens and triterpenes. This is a New Zealand study. Uh, New Zealanders seem to be very good at trying to understand the health benefits of their produce, um, sometimes perhaps more than uh, we are in Australia, although I think that's changing. Uh, and I know that there are some studies, and I think there was a presentation here at this conference um, earlier yesterday. So in, in essence, there's a lot of diversity in different species of, of apples and, um, and they may vary in terms of colour uh, and uh, the total phenolics, which you can see um, had you know, many thousand fold differences between uh, one variety and another. So I think that there are opportunities to understand um, the variability of different um, apple and pear species uh, and trying to locate what their uh, unique um, benefits might be, not only in terms of the phenolic content, um, sorbitol composition, fibre composition, uh, and so on and so forth. Now, one of the studies that I, th I was really quite excited by, again, because it was a human study, uh, and this was a study that, uh, because apples in particular, uh, and fruit in general, apples and pears, have been associated with a lower cardiovascular risk, um, why is that? Is that just an association, or is there something really that's happening physiologically? Uh, and this study was done by some colleagues in, in Western Australia who do some tremendous work in the cardiovascular space. And um, what they showed was that the flavonoids and nitrates in apples, uh, after you consume them, uh, increase nitric oxide status, which enhances the elasticity of your arteries. The more elastic your arteries are, the better it is for your health and um, the lower your blood pressure. So they were able to show that ingestion of, uh, of, of these components were able to uh, change arterial elasticity and change blood pressure post-consumption. Why I think that's interesting is that it happens right after you've eaten them. It's all very well to think about what some food might do many, many years down the track, but I think it's always helpful to have something that you can feel the difference or at least measure the difference. And as um, technologies to measure our biological status become more available to us, there are blood pressure monitors, for example, that, that, that many people use, um, people will be able to notice some of these physiological changes. So there are very, very uh, clear reasons why uh, particular chemical components uh, in, in fruit, and particularly apples and pears, might actually be um, particularly helpful here. Now, so much for apples, and we did a comprehensive report. There's a lot there, and there's more things coming through about apples. But the current work that we're doing at the moment is really to look at the health benefits of pears. And really, the literature is very, very sparse. Um, of course, I was surprised to me that um, pears have been used as a traditional folk remedy in China for more than 2,000 years. Um, and they're very well known, and China is a massive producer of pears. Again, something I didn't know. Um, and so they're, they're probably held and revered rather more in China than, than we do. Um, now, often the traditional uh, approach or the the traditional perspective of how uh, foods are in, in, in countries like China, folk remedies may or may not have scientific evidence for them. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So I was interested in looking at whether or not there was any um, uh, likely um, benefit uh, from, from peers in the literature in relation to some of these particular areas. Um, now, we talked about weight control, and uh, uh, in weight control, uh, there was a human study that was done, uh, and uh, women were asked to um, either follow a diet that included three apples or three pears or um, three um, oat cookies, and it was a very, very simple study, but in essence, what they showed, and I guess no surprise, was that the apple and pear group lost more weight. Now, the reason that that happens is that it's the whole apple and the whole pear and the fact that it's very low in energy density, it takes time to eat, and so they are attributes of the whole fruit. Um, if, you, if you completely um, uh, blitz it in a Nutribullet, you may not get exactly these kinds of effects, although you will get some other nutritional benefits from that. So again, um, the fact that you know, they are foods that take time to eat uh, and they do also have an effect on appetite uh, is a very important attribute of, of apples and pears. 
Uh, pears also contain anti-inflammatory and antioxidant components. There have been uh, studies from uh, a group, um, Liadal, uh, not Australian, uh, who've, who've really tried to look at the chemical composition uh, of, uh, of pears and identified um, their various components. Uh, and whether something contains an anti-inflammatory compound or not is really interesting, but it doesn't necessarily tell you whether it does anything in a human. So I think this is really interesting information, but does not necessarily tell you um, whether or not um, you're going to see any particular uh, effect. So I think that there is a need to, uh, to undertake studies in humans. Um, okay, so one thing that I think really stuck out for me uh, of the very, very few studies that have been done on pears is that um, there's a particular um, variety of pear, uh, a, a Korean pear. I've got the actual botanical name. Who's ever heard of Korean pear? A few, yeah, okay. It was news to me. The interesting thing about Korean pear is that it has a history of use um, which um, has been well known in, in Asian countries. It lowers blood alcohol and is supposedly reduces hangover symptoms. Now, that's interesting. Is that really the case? And surprise, surprise, there was a study that actually did a study in humans. Um, this is the sort of clinical study we'd never get away with, I don't think, in Australia. Um, they got a, a bunch of young guys in, um, gave them 540 mils of spirits, uh, <laughs> um, and, uh, and nothing else. On another occasion, they gave them 540 mils of spirits and Korean pear juice um, and uh, then measured uh, their blood alcohol over the 24-hour uh, period and also measured their symptoms uh, in relation to some of the um, effects of, of hangover, which ranged from um, memory and headaches, dizziness, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and what they found was that absolutely there was a reduction in alcohol uh, in the blood after consuming the pear juice condition, uh, which was, was quite uh, apparent. Uh, and not only that, but 24 hours later, um, there was roughly 20% um, fewer symptoms uh, in those guys that had actually had um, the pear juice. So you know, there really is some truth in this. No one seems to have really exploited it to any significant degree. What they also found was that if you are a person who uh, has a uh, particular genotype for alcohol dehydrogenase, in other words, you don't break down alcohol particularly quickly, you're, even, you get, you're going to get more benefit from this product. So uh, in, in many Asian countries, they, they do have a high prevalence of um, a low ability to metabolise alcohol. So you can imagine that these kinds of products um, may, uh, may help to alleviate hangovers more in some people than others. And if you're someone like me who uh, has had a, a gene test done through 23andMe, you can actually find out um, these days um, by just doing a spit test, sending it off to the US, and they will tell you whether you've got a whole range of different genotypes that have a susceptibility for various conditions. So interesting bit of information, and, um, you know, maybe Peroca might be uh, a product uh, of the future. So really just in summary, um, uh, really fruit consumption, at least to a day, is universally promoted in nutritional recommendations, but we need to know why that's important. Whole apples and pears are both low in kilojoules, low in energy density. They're a good source of fiber, vitamin C and potassium. They, uh, apples and pears in particular varieties and their components have several potential attributes which could be explored further to develop in innovative products for better health. And in terms of the various areas for health, um, cardiovascular health, uh, type 2 diabetes, weight management, asthma and rhinitis, gut health and constipation, and question mark alcohol reduction uh, if, uh, if we go down that area. So thank you very much. And uh, I, I do apologise that I, I have to leave uh, rather quickly uh, after the uh, uh, talk this morning, but happy to answer any questions if we've got time.